Hey YouTubers, how you doing? Welcome to this episode of Take the Fear Out of the Gear with me, Jason Bangers. And me, Mr. Chumley Warner. Now last week you may have seen our rather interesting video on a 1942 oscilloscope with Peter. So this week it's time for you to have a look at the repair. So we're going to hand you over to Alan the Great. Right, we've got a bit of a relic here today. Well, it's certainly... Certainly an old one. First thing I noticed how heavy it was. <laughs> when I put it on the bench, it's got a massive, massive transformer in it. So obviously it's got valves in it. Apart from that, there's not a lot I can really say until I open it up and have a look. Right, well, I managed to get, get the box off. Nice piece of kit, actually. Um, well made, sort of solid stuff. It's all made out of a chassis, which is really good. Obviously that's your tube, goes up there with your new metal screen. It's got quite a nice thick new metal screen around it, it's got some sort of magnetic fields and things like that don't, don't affect the trace. Got your valves here, one there, one there, and you've got something actually sort of melted on this one which is intriguing on this rectifier. This is this is the, uh, the high voltage rectifier which uh, powers the tube and it's got, it's got something melted on it, I don't know what that is, like wax or bitumen or something or rubber. It's absolutely loaded with caps. To get it working properly all these electrolytics would have to be replaced especially after after that age but uh, we'll see how they go. That's that. We've got two caps on this side which are the oil field type caps probably to do with the smoothing. Quite sure yet what they are so I can't see what they are. They're all encased in metal. Um, you've got a big power transformer down around on the bottom here, which is which, which is really heavy. What I'll do is we'll turn it round and we'll have a look at the other side and see what we've got. Let's see, we've got a little 6J5 there, um, that's a triode. What we've got here, VR60, six VR, that's a VU something, that's a VU VHT rectifier. We'll turn this round. Right, so this side, got another electrolytic there, which somebody's written retest April 19, 1950 on the top, whatever that is, whether they tested it then, I don't know, tested the unit, I don't know. More caps here, it's absolutely loaded with them. Okay, so these valves I'm quite familiar with, these are 807s. They're not the same ones, but obviously, but obviously they're, they're for the, I think they're the Y outputs. So they're, yeah, quite, quite a beefy thing they are. Um, they're a nice general purpose tube, They're good for audio as well these are. And you've got a 5Z4 rectifier and a metal, metal and it's optical. That is a, so it's actually got two rectifiers, it's got one for the high voltage and one for the, one for the, uh, for the rest of the circuit. It's got some insulators along here with some big resistors on which uh, is quite good and a little pilot bar there. Multi, uh, pots here which are probably filthy dirty and they probably need cleaning but uh, yeah so it's about all that's on top as I say I've mentioned the big capacitors on the back here with the metal ones what I'll do is I'll turn it over and we'll have a look at the bottom see what's under there right so this is the bottom first thing I've noticed is that the actual wire in itself is in pretty good condition considering its age it's all plastic um, single core wiring that looks awful <laughs> so we're not not going to power it up not with that in there that's a capacitor or what's left of it all of these capacitors have gone they're, they're, they're all pretty rough I should think and uh, I think they all need to be replaced before we're going to even attempt especially that one to be to power it up got a couple of chokes there for the power supply it's a well smooth power supply by the looks of it so it's got cloth covered wire and we're having got cloth covered it's got plastic um, so yeah it's, in, it's, it's nicely made it's, it's a nicely made thing I noticed that uh, the, uh, the switch on the front here the whole thing is moving because the, the switch itself is actually seized up and uh, it needs freeing off so I don't wonder why the, I wonder why there was no clicking indents on it I did find out what that other switch was obviously for that CX sweep um, what we'll do is I think replace that obviously before we even attempt to put it on the variac 
and see if we can get some something out of it. I think that's the next port of call. It's a new day. We've got some bits and bobs for um, replacement caps for for this uh, Cossor scope. I haven't got around to replacing these ones yet, which, which I'm going to. When I switched it on with via the Variac, all I could get was like a blur in the screen. It wasn't uh, there's was no time base. It wasn't focusing. So I thought, well, the best place to start is the, the high tension supplies which feed the tube, which is a negative supply on this one. I thought I'd go through the, the usual stuff. There's a high, there's a, a potential divider for the focus control and for the brightness control. And what is this? It's all on here, as you can see. There's all this here down here, which had to be checked. These caps had to be checked. These ones here and those ones. And uh, I found that this cap C35, which goes which goes to the um, goes to the first anode, is um, is uh, sorry anode two and anode three. It uh, was open circuit, so I replaced that. Um, C36, which is an electrolytic, which goes to the brilliance control, that was leaky, so I replaced that. And um, there was also some resistors that had gone high, gone high in this potential divider down here. Um, so I've replaced those with. Um, I didn't. They were 3.3 meg. I didn't have any 3.3 meg, so I got some uh, 10 meg resistors, and I put three of them in parallel. That makes the 3.3 meg. And also there was one in the middle. There is a, a one meg on 820k rather in there, which. Uh, I replaced. Basically, that's what I've done underneath. I also replaced this valve holder up here for the recti for the rectifier because it was so loose that the valve almost dropped out of its socket. So I replaced that. That was just a standard octal socket which I replaced. Right, I'm going to turn it over. Right, and uh, on the top, with um, back to the capacitor that I replaced, which is which was open circuit. I, I replaced it with this one, which is an X2 capacitor, but. Uh, it's got the voltage rating, so that's fine. Replace that, and also there's a, the 12 microfarad, which is uh, basically in series with that, which goes on again. It's uh, soldered to this tag board at the back. Um, I've replaced that. I replaced one of the 807s, and because they weren't a match pair, so I, I replaced one of those, and I've got a, I've got an 807 out of my out of my stash, and I put them in. So they're both nice, nicely matched now. Um, and they're, they're the actual amplifier valves. The other capacitor which I replaced, which was a, a bit uh, leaky, was this one here. You can't see it through there because it's a, and that goes across the, that goes across the uh, the focus control. Um, so I replaced that as well. And the panel light, I replaced the panel light because it got a 12 volt panel light in there. It was so dim, there's no point in having it. So I put an 8 volt panel light in there and. Uh, We'll try it and see what happens. I'll just plug it in. And still a lot more work to be done on this yet. Right, so we've actually got a trace, a trace on it now, um, which you can actually focus. So you can focus the spots to a certain extent. There's a bit of astigmatism on it, but uh, there's no, there's no control for that. So uh, right, okay. So we put the time base on. And the time base. The thing is, it's one-sided still. So I've got to sort that out. As you can see, you can you can turn it up, and you can turn the the time base almost stop. You can turn it up, and you can you get a couple of lines on it, which is better than what you could get before. Um, it's still a little bit cockeyed, and um, obviously I've got to turn the tube a bit. And the X shift is a bit uh, one-sided, so I, so obviously there's some imbalance on the X plates there somewhere. So I've got to sort that out. Got single trace there. If you want a single trace, and um, there's a lot of ripple in there, as you can see. So obviously the electrolytics are all sort of like dried out, and it's got they need sorting. Yeah, it's an ongoing project, but it's a it's quite a nice little thing to to get going. At least we've got something on it now, and it's actually working, which it wasn't before. I took the tube out and I cleaned the tube up as yeah, because it was a bit grubby and I put it back in again and I thought well, I had it straight um, obviously because it was it was very loose and I had to re repack it all at the back with rubber at least it's solid now but I still haven't got it quite parallel so I've got to uh, turn it a bit 
um, to get it parallel. But uh, yeah, it's coming on. Basically, all the capacitors have been changed, apart from these ones, which tested okay. There's a couple over the back there. Mainly on the timing for the um, time base, I put some new capacitors in there. I put one in there, one in there, one in there. These ones are mica and they are okay. Um, not suffering from the mica disease, so that was okay. Um, there's also some timing capacitors on this board here. You've got one there, one there, and there's a couple of paper capacitors on there which are, which I've replaced. Basically all those ones, and there's a couple over here. There's one there, one there, which are on the power supply board. And as, we, as we're here, the, the, one of the controls was open circuit, so what I had to do a bit of a modification. Normally here there is a, an on-off switch, so what I had to do, this was the actual for, for, the, for the X shift, and what I had to do was I had to put a, a, new, a new pot in, in there for the X shift and also it, it, it um, doubles up as a main switch as well. I've replaced all the, the dodgy wiring, um, there's a wire which this wire goes straight to the X plate, but I've also I've kept all the old wiring intact with some heat shrink over it so that it can, if, it, if we can get a, rig, a new control for it, which actually original then which is unlikely but we'll try we can put it back to how it was and uh, make it original again and make it without ha having any holes drilled or anything like that we can just put the original switch back in there and uh, yeah and it all works but uh, I'll turn, turn it round because it's quite heavy actually and uh, show you what I've done on the other side what I've done on the other side obviously here's the original wiring for that control I had to put a pot in there this is the original wiring for the other control which I the original control which I, I masked off there so it won't hurt that can just sit there new dial light as I said these capacitors are okay put a new 807 in one of them I can't remember which one now I think it was that one just because I had it and because it was it was a match pair with the, it was a match with the other one and right I'll turn it over and underneath if I can lift it up a bit Underneath, I'll show you what I've done. New resistor, capacitors obviously. Th these are the resistors for the power supply. And I've put three 10 megs in parallel because I didn't have any 3.3 meg 2 watts, so I just put a 10, three 10 megs in there, that's fine. New caps, new resistors in that. That's the potential divider for the tube, by the way, for the high voltage new cap there as well. And also I've replace a bit of the wiring because there's a lot of this rubber wiring which was going all um, well it was just all falling apart basically new cathode resistors in the 807s where they're, they're the Y amps I replaced yeah I've replaced the rectifier the HT rectifier valve base which was um, wasn't very good it was it was uh, making very poor contact so I fished out a, an octal valve base and put in there so I put a new one in it was very loose that 5Z4 was very loose in there, so uh, and now it's okay. What we'll do is we'll power it up and uh, connect it up, power it up, and then see see what sort of trace we get on it. Okay, well we've got it connected up. We've got it connected up to my um, oscillator. At the moment, it's set to switch it on. It's set to one kilohertz. Right, we'll turn this on and see what we get. Light comes on. <laughs> That's good for a trace to come up. It's quite dim actually because the, the tube is not not at its very best unfortunately. This is the X shift. Yeah. This is the Y shift which uh, alters the X shift as well a little bit. That's the Y shift. At the moment we've got the time base is off and um, we've got it on one kilohertz at the moment so we'll put the time base on which is there. I don't know whether you can actually see that. I'll put the X shift back again. The brightness is up full, I don't know whether you can actually see that because we've got a lot of lights, um, fluorescent lights in here. That's one kilohertz. That's okay, it's actually locked itself, but it's it's um the blanking isn't very good on it, which is down to the circuit. Well, that's one kilohertz. Let you see that, let me move this and I'll put it on to ten. Put that velocity up a bit. And then you see that trace on there. You can see the lack of blanking with the. Well, I suppose the other thing to mention whilst we're looking at the screen is, is it's not got the graticule on it, is it? No, no. And presume, like you said, it might have a uh, 
a, a sort of a cover that comes over the top yeah, of the screen. Yeah, really, I think you can get a hood thing for Yeah, hood, that's works. the word, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is that. So here we are with Al. There, there it all is. <laughs> Al's performed a miracle again. It's all working. Uh, luckily we had the manual and everything as well, so that's that's all good. Yeah, we had the manual. That Circuit helps. diagrams, definitely. Yeah, yeah. All we've got to do now, if we can find another one or, or one similar, we can just do that control. Put a handle on it. Put a handle on it and sort of take it from there, really. Mm -hmm. So well done to Al and uh, it's time to say goodbye from us. Cheerio. Yep. <laughs> See you next time. Bye. We're sorry that you couldn't quite see the, the graph line very well. Um, there is a new tube with it, isn't there? Yeah, I, th I think if we... Uh, or if Alan does some more restoration like handle and if we find a control, uh, it might be worth putting the new tube in. So there might be a part two coming of that oscilloscope, so you might see it properly finished. Well, there not might, there will be, so keep an eye out in the future. If you're interested in this kind of thing, i.e. capacitors, rectifiers, resistors, I bet a lot of that went over your head to the next that did mine. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily enough, Alan the Great knows what he's talking about, um, hence why he's called Alan the Great. So well done, Alan. Good one. Pete was well chuffed. I mean, he was quite emotional that it was working again. Unfortunately, out in that bright sunlight, we couldn't really show him. Um, we could have took it in a dark room, but we didn't want to waste a beautiful sunny day, did we? It was a very nice day. Yeah, so that's it, guys. So uh, we'll have something more exciting and interesting for you on the next video. That you can take to the bank. From me, Jason Bangers, here at Take the Fear, it's goodbye. And from me, Mr. Chumbly Warner, it's goodbye. Smash that bell. And like, subscribe. Yeah, just do it for the algorithm on YouTube for us, please, if you can. It just helps the algorithms. It'd be great. Thanks very much, you guys. Thanks for supporting us. We really appreciate it. We'll see you on the next one. Ciao for now.